If, like me, you're a bit of a PC enthusiast, then having easy access to your machine's vital statistics can be a really nice thing to have. True, there are loads of overlay apps available that can show you all manner of information, but these tend to get in the way and can stop you from enjoying your gaming experience as much. Thankfully, a solution is at hand, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a PC stats display screen using a Raspberry Pi single board computer. So our parts list for this project is quite short. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi like this one, a micro SD memory card, a power supply, a compatible screen and a case to put it all in. I'm using the official Raspberry Pi 7 inch screen which has the advantage of being connected to the Pi via a ribbon cable for data and some jumper leads for power thus keeping unnecessary clutter down. But any available HDMI screen will work just fine and there are plenty of options in different shapes and sizes available online. I'm also using this neat little case which is designed specifically for the official screen which makes the whole project a bit neater. It doesn't normally have unsightly holes cut out of it, I've just used this example in a previous project. I've created a parts list for this project which is available via my Amazon store page, a link for which you can find in the video description. Before we get to grips with this hardware, we need to take a quick look at the software which is going to power our setup. Thankfully, all of the hard work has been taken care of by the guys over at ModBros, who have developed special software to allow all your stats to be easily displayed on the Raspberry Pi. Full credit for this project goes to the team at ModBros for their software part of this build, and I encourage you to check out their channel via the link in the video description. The first step is to install the server application on the PC you wish to monitor. This is a straightforward installation and leaves you with a server app which you can access from the taskbar on your Windows machine. The next step is to download the client image for the Raspberry Pi's SD card. Installation itself is relatively simple thanks to the Raspberry Pi Foundation's imager software which can quickly and easily create bootable SD cards from downloaded image files. Insert the SD card into your card reader, then launch the Raspberry Pi imager software, select the custom option from the first drop down list, and then select the ModBros image file. Then select the SD card from the middle drop down and click right. You can find all the links for the necessary software packages in the video description below. Once you have the ModBros software written to the SD card, we're finally ready to assemble our Raspberry Pi pieces together. If you've procured a different screen or case then you should follow any instructions provided, but for the equipment I suggest the process is quite simple. First, install the micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi, then position it above the circuit board provided with the official screen and secure it using the screws provided. Next, connect the ribbon cable for the screen as shown here. Lift the clasp on the receptacle on the Pi and slowly insert the ribbon cable with a small amount of pressure. Once it's seated, press down on the clasp to secure the ribbon cable in place. Next, you'll need to attach the provided jumper cables between the Raspberry Pi and the screen so that the screen has power. Connect the red cable to the 5V pin and the black to the ground pin on the screen board then connect the other ends of these wires to the pins shown here on the Raspberry Pi. Next, place the case over the top of the Raspberry Pi and line it up with the four mounting holes on the back of the screen. During my build, I found that the case wouldn't sit quite properly at first, but loosening off the screws holding down the Raspberry Pi allowed enough wiggle room to get it properly seated, and I then tightened the screws down after. Slap the back cover on the case and you've completed the hardware side of this build. With that done, it's time to position your Pi on your desk before connecting the power and, optionally, an Ethernet cable connected to your home router. If you can't use a network cable, then one extra step is required and that is to connect your Pi to your home Wi-Fi network. Upon boot, it will give you instructions for connecting another device, such as a phone or tablet, directly to the Pi, where you can access the Wi-Fi configuration page via your device's browser. 
The page that opens allows you to select your Wi-Fi network from a list and then add your password before clicking OK. You should then find that the Raspberry Pi connects seamlessly to your home network, with no network cable required. With the Raspberry Pi setup and the server software running on your PC, you should find that the stats for your PC are automatically displayed on the Raspberry Pi. If you're not happy with the default display, then you can edit which stats are shown using the server software as shown here. There are also a couple of alternate themes available for the display which can be selected from the device settings menu. My personal favourite is the Dubadar theme, though I also have a soft spot for the Fallout theme which is not surprising seeing as the second most popular video on this channel is a Fallout walkthrough I published in 2011. And there you have it guys, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, toss it a like and please consider getting subscribed to see more content like this. If you do have any questions, please post them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers!